What we're going to talk about is something known as a twister back take. It's also sometimes called a ninja back take or a baby bolo. Um, I'll have you just lay with your head that way first. So I'll do it slow so you can kind of see it first. So this is a back take, and I'm doing it from a reverse kisikatami position. And the person, the indicator is that they're still trying to turn in to recover their guard. This is very common. If they're doing something else and turn the other way, I would do something else. Right, I'll start crushing them. But everybody's told to get on their side, so he's doing what he's theoretically supposed to be doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his closest leg to me, and I'm going to hook it. I'm going to place my foot on the floor, sit up on my knee. Now, I'm going to roll over my shoulder blade and stop my foot on the ground. When I do that, I'm going to catch his hip, sit up on my elbow, and chase the back a little bit. I'm going to scoot up, put my hands together, and watch my feet. I'm going to switch the way they're crossed, and then I'm going to bridge to open them up and throw my far hook in. Let's do the same angle and talk a little bit more about it. So, What's going on is I'm hooking this, my calf is to the back of his knee, my foot's flat on the ground. Now I'm going to sit up and get my knee in his hip pocket. His back and his leg are going to form a triangle, and that line is what I have to roll my shoulder blade over. If I roll north of that line, especially if they're bigger than me, it will fail. So I've got to roll, put my shoulder blade here. It's as if I'm reaching for his feet to roll over my shoulder blade. And then I'm going to stomp my foot on the ground and catch his hip. I'm going to use that momentum to sit up onto my elbow and then I'm going to start chasing the back a little bit. Just means I'm going to do a little shrimp and then try to get my hands together. Now I'm going to switch the way my feet are crossed and I'm going to bridge into my opponent to open them up to throw my far hook in because a lot of times people are defending by pulling their knee very close. So I'm in this reverse case of Katami position. I'm going to throw my foot over and I need to have my foot on this side of his bottom leg, not on this side, here. I'm going to sit up to my knee, get my knee into his hip, and I'm going to roll past that line that we talked about. Again, it's as if I'm reaching for his legs. When I do this, my knees are kind of scissoring each other to create a connection between my legs and his top leg. As I do this, I'm going to stomp my feet on the ground, which turns him around. My hand has to catch his hip or I'll turn him all the way into a turtle position. This hand that catches his hip, the momentum of that is going to help pull me up onto my elbow and I'm going to start getting closer to his back. I'm trying to get that chest to back connection that we always want on a back. Now I get my hands together, switch my feet, bridge, throw my hook in. Put your head here. Again, reverse tensa. Hook in, knee to hip. Roll past the line, stop and grab the hip. When I grab the hip, it's going to pull me up to my elbow. And this is going to allow me to chase the back. Chasing the back just means trying to get my chest on his back or spine. So I'm going to do a little scoot, which moves me a little bit north. My hands go together. I switch my feet like we talked about, and I bridge to open him up. If I don't, this knee is defending the way for my foot to get in. So I'm going to bridge him open and throw my hook in. It's just the, the body mechanics are weird there. You can't hold that turtle position, that balled up position like that if I bridge. My bridge is stronger than his balled up position. Now put your head there. The essential detail to this is me stomping my foot on the floor. If I don't stomp my foot or feet on the ground, I won't have enough spin power to roll him. Right? So I need to get in here and really think about stomping my foot on the floor and then I can start chasing the back. The most common mistake on this though, same position, the most common mistake is not knowing that line that I have to roll past. It's very, very common. And even more common than that in the very beginning is just rolling the wrong way completely. So if it's your first time ever doing this, it's very common that people will want to go on the back so they start rolling this way. It makes sense. That's where his back's at. So it's very counterintuitive what I'm doing. 
But the line, that's where people, really, once you start to know it, that's where people get in trouble at. If he's bigger than me at all, and I don't roll my shoulder blade past the line of his hips, I will not be able to elevate him. So if I roll like this, I won't be able to do anything. I have to roll past the line, and then I can roll him and get to the back. So I'm just going to do this now from a few angles so you can see it without me talking. So it looks complicated, but it's not really that complicated. It's actually, um, it's fairly simple once you have the rhythm of it. And then it becomes super fun because people don't expect you to be in side control and then the next thing you know, be on their back. So we like to do it here, it's a lot of fun. There's also a whole bunch of things that can happen inside of that. There's like half slicers, there's some cool leg lock stuff that happens in there too. But you have to know this rollover first or all the other fun stuff just won't exist. So. Practice slow, remember the details, stomping the ground, rolling past the line, and everything should come out in the wash, good luck.